Hello friends, today we will discuss an important topic from head, neck and face, cavernous sinus. Before discussing or starting this video, the prerequisites are that you must know about the dural folds and dural venous sinus. You should be able to enumerate the dural venous sinuses. So we will not discuss in detail about the dural venous sinuses in this video. We will stick to the cavernous sinus only. So let us start with the discussion. Cavernous sinus, before discussing the cavernous sinus, as we already seen, the cranial cavity, it contains the brain and meninges. The brain, it is covered by three meninges, outer dura mater, then middle arachnoid mater and the innermost pia mater. There are two layers of dura mater. These two layers, these are outer endosteal layer, which is nothing but the periosteum of your cranial cavity and inner meningeal layer which covers the brain and both these layers are attached to the skull both these layers are attached to each other but at certain places they enclose a space between them and this space it is filled with venous blood these spaces are known as dural venous sinuses so let us begin with the cavernous sinus cavernous sinus it is a dural venous sinus like other dural venous sinuses like superior sagittal sinus, inferior sagittal sinus, transverse as well as the sigmoid sinus. So why it is called cavernous sinus? It is called cavernous sinus because the interior of this sinus it is divided into caverns or spaces, multiple small spaces by the fibrous bands or the trabeculae, fibrous septa, these are called as trabeculae. So, like our routine practice, we should divide the topic under different headings so that it will be easy for us to recall the topic while preparing for the theory. What are the headings in the cavernous sinus? These are location, dimensions of the cavernous sinus, extent from where it extends anteroposteriorly, what are the external features, relations of the cavernous sinus, structures within the sinus, then what are the tributaries or incoming channels and what are the draining channels or outgoing channels and what are the factors helping the drainage of this cavernous sinus and lastly we will see few points of applied anatomy so what is the location of this cavernous sinus it is located in the middle cranial fossa on each side of the sphenoid bone or we can say more specifically body of the sphenoid bone and it is enclosed in between endosteal and meningeal layer of dura mater as we have already discussed. What are the dimensions? The dimensions are 2 cm by 1 cm. Extent of the cavernous sinus, it is discussed anteriorly and posteriorly. So anteriorly it extends up to the superior orbital fissure and posteriorly it extends up to the pitrous part, apex of the pitrous part of the temporal bone. External features the cavernous sinus it has got roof, lower, medial wall and lateral wall. The roof as well as the lateral wall these are formed by meningeal layer of the dura mater whereas floor and medial wall these are formed by the endosteal layer of the dura mater. Relations let us discuss important relations of the cavernous sinus. Roof is related to the optic tract and optic chiasma it is also related to the olfactory tract is related to the internal carotid artery and anterior perforated substance of the brain. What are the relations of the floor? The relations of the floor, these are foramen lacerum, junction of body and greater wing of sphenoid bone. The relations of the medial wall or medially it is related to the pituitary gland and sphenoidal air sinus which is present within the body of sphenoid. The relations laterally, these are temporal lobe with the uncus. We will see few of these relations through a, we will see few of these relations through a image that I am going to show you now. So this is superior view of the skull. This is the interior of the skull in which we can see body of the sphenoid. This is the body of sphenoid. You can see the pointer. Then if we turn it you can see the anterior boundary that is the superior orbital fissure. Posterior extent it is the pitrous part of the temporal bone. 
and you can also see in the floor there is foramen lacerum isn't it and the foramen oval and spinosum are also seen and this is the squamous part of the temporal bone and this is the location of cavernous sinus on each side of body of spinoid bone posteriorly there is press cerebri of mid midbrain so what to draw in the theory paper the theory paper you have to draw one diagram that is a coronal section of the cavernous sinus this coronal section it will pass through the body of spinoid let us see how to draw this section we will begin our diagram with the body of spinoid and spinoidal layer sinuses next we will show the endosteal layer of the dura mater then we will draw pituitary gland and surrounding it we will show the meningeal layer of dura mater then on one side and on one side we should draw the cavernous sinus filled with the venous blood and we will show the trabeculae dividing the sinus into various small spaces so this is the venous blood in cavernous sinus now let us see remaining part of this diagram we will see later on so let's get back to our ppt now let us discuss the structures present in the lateral wall of cavernous sinus these structures are named from above downwards oculomotor nerve cranial nerve 3 cochlear nerve cranial nerve 4 and ophthalmic nerve which is a branch of the trigeminal nerve it is also called as v1 all these three structures they enter into the superior orbital fissure then we have maxillary nerve in the lowermost structure passing through the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus is maxillary nerve and it moves anteriorly and enters the pterygopalatine fossa via the foramen rotundum so this is a mistake common mistake the students make while writing the cavernous sinus that they write mandibular nerve so we have to remember that mandibular nerve does not pass through the cavernous sinus it is present below the endosteal layer and it exits through the foramen oval not through the cavernous sinus now what are the structures passing through the cavernous sinus or through the nearer to the medial wall of the cavernous sinus it is the internal carotid this is the medial most structure and next is the abducens nerve or cranial nerve 6 so let us see these structures in our diagram that we were drawing so we have drawn up till this up to this we have drawn our diagram now we'll see the remaining structures the lateral wall we have to show four nerves from above downwards and in the medial wall one artery and one nerve cranial nerve three four ophthalmic and maxillary these are present in the lateral wall whereas internal carotid artery and abducens nerve these are present in the medial now let us see the structures related to the roof of the cavernous sinus these are optic nerve and optic chiasma and internal carotid artery the internal carotid artery it travels through the cavernous sinus so what are the tributaries or incoming channels of cavernous sinus we will discuss these are discussed under three headings one from the orbit from the brain and third from the meninges let us see one by one the tributaries from the orbit these are superior ophthalmic vein inferior ophthalmic vein and central vein of retina tributaries from the brain these are superficial middle cerebral vein and inferior cerebral vein then we have the tributaries from the meninges it is sphenoparietal sinus sphenoparietal sinus it drains towards the cavernous sinus it is present over the lesser wing of spinoid bone and middle meningeal vein particularly its frontal trunk it drains towards the cavernous sinus next we will discuss the draining channels or communications of the cavernous sinus means the structures to which the cavernous sinus drains so it will drain towards the transverse sinus via superior petrosal sinus it will drain towards the internal jugular vein via inferior petrosal sinus it will drain into the pterygoid plexus through the emissary veins it is a two way communication and it will drain to the facial vein to the superior 
ophthalmic vein the anterior and posterior intracavernous sinuses they allow the two cavernous sinus to communicate with each other and it, it is also in communication with the basilar venous plexus which in turn is in communication with the vertebral venous plexus so remember these all communications these are two way communications and valveless communications so the blood it may flow in either direction now what to draw to show these communications there are two diagrams we will draw both the diagrams and we will try to simplify the diagram that are given in the textbook so let us see how to draw these diagrams we will draw this diagram first draw two cavernous sinuses show the central vein of retina then superior ophthalmic vein and inferior ophthalmic vein draining towards the cavernous sinus next we will show the veins from the brain that is superficial middle cerebral vein and inferior cerebral vein these two veins we will show as they are opening from above they are shown like this next we will show the communications of emissary veins the uh, communications of emissary veins and the communication from meninges that is the middle meningeal vein its frontal trunk next we will show the draining channels or communications of cavernous sinus first superior petrosal sinus draining towards the transverse sinus and inferior petrosal sinus draining towards internal jugular vein the internal jugular vein here it will pass through the jugular foramen so at the meeting point of inferior petrosal sinus and the jugular vein we will show the jugular foramen next we will show the two cavernous sinus communicate with each other via the intercavernous sinuses anterior and posterior intercavernous sinus and lastly we will show basilar venous plexus and it is communicating with the vertebral venous plexus passing through the foramen magnum so this was a simplified diagram now we will draw another diagram to so draw face show supraorbital and supratrochlear veins they will form angular vein which will continue further as facial vein we will show the supraorbital supratrochlear forming a facial vein then we will draw cavernous sinus and the pterygoid venous plexus the communications these are superior ophthalmic vein it communicates to the facial vein and the another important communication is via deep facial vein deep facial vein drain towards the pterygoid venous plexus which in turn drain towards the cavernous sinus via the emissary veins now we will discuss the factors helping venous return from the cavernous sinus or drainage from the cavernous sinus first is the pulsations of the internal carotid artery then it is gravity and third one is the position of the head now let us discuss few of the important applied anatomy aspects of cavernous sinus first and foremost is cavernous sinus thrombosis so any infection from the dangerous area of face the nodes and the paranasal air sinuses it may lead to cavernous sinus thrombosis because of the valveless two way communication the root of spread as we have already discussed it is from the facial vein to the deep facial vein deep facial vein to the pterygoid venous plexus from the pterygoid venous plexus to the emissary veins and to the cavernous sinus so what will be the effects of the thrombosis the thrombosis it will lead to nerve involvement as well as the vascular involvement that is vein and artery involvement so the nerves when the sensory nerves are involved it will lead to pain so pain is due to the ophthalmic and maxillary nerve involvement then it may lead to ophthalmoplegia which is nothing but the paralysis of extraocular muscles the cranial nerve third fourth and sixth they are supplying the extraocular muscles then due to the venous congestion orbital edema may appear the interesting thing it is pulsating exophthalmos pulsating exophthalmos exophthalmos it is a protrusion of the eyes what happens in some cases of head injury the internal carotid artery it may rupture and the arterial blood it mixes with the 
venous blood of the cavernous sinus and it is it leads to the formation of an arteriovenous fistula and the pulsations of the internal carotid artery these are seen externally as a pulsating eyeball so the eyeball it pulsates with each heartbeat which is called as pulsating exothalamus so friends it was an easy explanation of cavernous sinus if you like this video please do like it on the channel share it with your friends and if you haven't subscribed please subscribe to the easy anatomy for ug channel and i will be back with one more topic of anatomy till then bye good night